This is uh, really one of those techniques that comes from the, 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 old, the, the world of programming. Programmers frequently use different edit routines and error trapping logic by looking at the length of, of different fields, uh, like medical record number, like account number, like a date. And that's how a lot of programs catch errors. Now you have the ability to do that right here, right within the medical record number. I'd like to now go on and we're going to talk about uh, validating against dates. I'm going to move slowly over here to exercise five, worksheet five, the date of admission. And here I'm going to give you several examples. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the data validation that I've set up here. Date, I click on data, validation, and know what, notice what I've done here. In Column E, I've said that we're going to allow a date. We're going to be checking for a date. And that date for this set of data must start between January 1st, 2013, and it must end prior to March 31st, 2013. So what I'm doing here is I'm limiting the amount of data, the number of days that can be used for the date of admission. I'm going to click OK. I, I'm going to give my uh, user an input message there, date of admission, enter for them to enter the date of admission, input, and if they are have a, a if they make an error, I'm going to stop them and I'm going to tell them invalid, please check. So now I'm going to go to my first one. Remember I said that the all dates of admission, oops, I made a mistake there. I should check correct my spelling, admission, there we go. I now want to have every date of admission for this group of patients must be during the first quarter of 2013. So my first patient was seen on January 15th. We're happy with that. The system is happy with that. The next patient was seen on February 15th. The system is happy with that. The third patient was seen on March 15th. The system is happy. The next patient was seen April 15th, 2013 invalid. It is not going to let me check. It's not going to let me input in this example. Why? Because 415, April 15th, comes after March 31st. So I, what it's doing is it's giving me the opportunity to recheck. I can put in 03, 31, 13, and it passes the edit criteria. Just to review, I click on data validation, and I'm, st and I'm setting my set, my Parameters here are between January 1st and March 31st of 2013. I've input my message to get, tell the user to input the date of admission, and I'm giving the, this, the user an error. Now let's suppose I only wanted to, instead of stopping the, the user, I simply only wanted to give the user a warning. If they put a wrong date in, I want to allow them to continue, but I want to give them a warning. So what I'm going to do under my error alert here is instead of stop, I'm going to say warning. And I'm going to tell them, I'm going to give my, keep my error message the same. I'm going to say invalid, please check. And now I click OK. So now watch what happens. I go to my next patient. I put in that the patient was seen on April 15th, 2013. And it now says invalid, please check. But it gives me this extra information. Do I want to continue? Well, yes. In fact, I do want to allow the user to override the parameters that I put in here. I now click yes, and it will allow me to do that. Again, what I've done here is I've simply changed my error alert from a warning, from, from, from stop, which shuts them down and doesn't allow them to continue, to a warning. That can be useful if you want to give the user a little bit more leeway. I personally, and if I'm going to the trouble to setting up a rule, I'd like to maintain that rule to the extent that po that's possible. Um, but you may want to be a little bit more uh, forgiving in terms of th that rule that you create. Now let me show you another way that you can put in the admission date. Instead of setting up the, the uh, date of admission within the data validation table that way, I can have my data validation table reference these dates over here. What I've done is I've actually put in dates in columns L and M, L2, M2, my start date and ending date. And now look what I've done. 
in column F. I click on data, validation. I now go to my settings tab and look what I've done. I can now reference a date, not as a date, but as a formula. I'm saying my start date must be equivalent to whatever is in L2. My end date must be equal to, um, it must be between um, L2, L2 and M2. I give my user the input message that you saw before, input date of admission. I then click on the error alert. I tell them that it's invalid. So now if I go in and I say the date of admission was 04, 01, 13, does that qualify between uh, what you see in red? No, it doesn't. Invalid. Check. Retry. 03, 31, 13, and it allows me to go on. So what you're seeing between the green and the blue, you're seeing two different ways of dealing with validation of dates. Very, very useful, particularly when you're putting in date sensitive information. You want to control what the user is allowed to put in. Very, very useful. And of course, it doesn't necessarily need to be the date of admission. It could be any date, date of discharge, date of final bill, date of what you decide what date you want to use. That's exercise five, data validation on dates. Now, what would data validation be if we couldn't also validate numeric data? Well, I've given you an example here. In fact, let me correct what I've got here and let me make this just to, as a teaching tool, make, make one green and make one blue. It's just easier to reference the blue column or the green column. The, the, the colors that you see on my uh, spreadsheets that I've created, by the way, have no internal meaning. They're just simply, I put them there as a, a teaching tool that allows me to quickly uh, tell you where to look. So I, we're now looking at column K, the data in the green. And what, that, what the data validation table allows me to do is it allows me to go in and create ranges of numeric data. If I click on, I, I highlight the data that I want to validate in terms of height, I click on my data validation and I say I want it to be a whole number. So I am not going to permit partial uh, uh, fractions of an inch in the height. Why did I make that decision? Because I made it. Who knows? It's an arbitrary decision. Maybe your organization would want to be able to put in that the, per the patient was 62 and a half inches. I've simply put in that I want to only allow whole numbers to be here. And furthermore, I do not want any patients who are shorter than 48 inches and taller than 90 inches. So now I have go, go here. Oh, I forgot one other thing. I'm sorry. I also tell the patient, uh, I give the user the message, enter patient height in inches as a whole number, and I give them my error alert. Must be greater than or equal to 48 and less than or 90 uh, and must be a whole number, try again. By the way, what you put in these error messages are completely up to you. I'll show you a couple of examples of that later. You could put anything. This data here, this 90 and this 48, are simply text I uh, items. They have nothing to do with the settings here that I put in as my minimum and maximum. My error alert is just a bunch of words that the user is going to see. So now I go into my next patient. It tells me enter patient height inches in whole number. So now I'm going to put in that the patient is 65.5 inches. And it tells me, nope, must be between 48 and 90 and must be a whole number. Now I say the patient is 65 inches and it allows me to proceed. I've done pretty much the same logic with the weight. What I'm doing here is I'm data validating, I'm, but I'm allowing a little bit looser. I'm saying I want to validate against a decimal, and that decimal must be between 70 and 400 pounds. I'm putting in the patient's weight, but I am going to allow a decimal place. So in this case, my patient is 65 inches tall, and I'm going to say the patient weighs 165 pounds and it will round it to the nearest whole number. If I say the patient is 165.5 pounds, it will allow me to do that. So using data validation allows me to go in and to restrict values, whether I'm talking about height or weight. I'm sure that you could think of many, many other types of restrictions that you might want to put on the data, whether it's lab tests or 
uh, in the financial world. It might be uh, that you don't want to allow anybody in an, in an age trial balance to put any data above uh, any uh, bill amount over $99,999. You can do anything. You're only limited by your imagination. But remember, when you're restricting your data by numeric, you must say, you must define whether it's going to be a decimal or whether it's going to be a whole number. Why does, why, why does column L appear in, in what to one decimal point? Well, that's simple. It appears that way because I formatted it that way. When I created my uh, column L, I, valid, I, I said I want it to be a number and I want it to be one decimal place and it will allow me to do that. I could, I could uh, round to as many decimal places as I want. All right, so you've now got a sense, kind of in summary, of how to analyze, how to validate on numeric, on dates, on length, and on names. We've done a lot, hopefully you're keeping up, and if, but if you have any questions, don't hesitate to send those questions to me.